Good afternoon, everybody. You're all so welcome to the 14th Annual Vigil Against Domestic Violence, presented by the Jennifer Lynch Committee and the Brookline Domestic Violence Roundtable. My name is Sheila O'Flaherty, and I am the co-chair of the Roundtable. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Rita McNally, who is my partner in crime, the other co-chair, to give the welcoming remarks. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us today to the 14th annual vigil against domestic violence in a time of extreme violence of our own. These are not easy times, and we're glad to see each other in safety. Jennifer Lynch was a Brookline girl. In fact, she worked in this very building. Uh, she went to the Brookline schools, and she got married, moved to the West Coast, and was murdered by her husband with a gun shot while she was taking a shower. She wasn't safe in her own home, and we've heard that for the last two weeks about a lot of other groups of people. On November 7th, the U.S. Supreme Court will have here the United States versus Rahimi. The issue is for harassing, stalking, or threatening victims by a partner, an intimate partner, and for that act, if found guilty, should lose their gun rights. A woman is five times more likely to be murdered by an intimate partner when her abuser has access to a gun. I found that out from our own police department. Some trying to claim Second Amendment issues on this problem. They're trying to make it a gun rights thing, and it's not. We're just trying to save lives and to take the guns away from the abusers. I'd like to take them away from a few others, but from the abuser is a must. But as a community of Brookline, we need to be together. We need to feel safe with each other and safe in our community. We are our brother's keeper, and I hope that we can always find the words when we disagree, that we can talk and come together and find some answers, but together. Uh, and we have a panel of fabulous people. And Sheila will return and let you know who they are. But again, thanks for coming, thanks for being interested, and thanks for helping us out. Folks, it's my very great pleasure to introduce our own Brookline Chief of Police, Jennifer Pastor. All right, good afternoon. Nope, tell me. This, this can be. I appreciate a reference I know well. <laughs> All right, good? All right, I'll, I'm just gonna slouch over then. Um, it's all good. <laughs> Rita can do no wrong. For anyone I haven't met yet, my name is Jennifer Pastor. I'm the Chief of Police here in Brookline. I stand or slouch before you tonight to emphasize our department's commitment to supporting the work of the Jennifer A. Lynch Committee and to ending domestic violence. We recognize, help is on the way, Not the first or last time Bill has helped me out. <clears throat> we recognize that our role in the police department goes beyond just enforcing the law. We're here to protect and serve, and that includes being vigilant against the hidden terrors that happen within the walls of our homes. This past year in our department, we've seen a lot of changes, and our domestic violence unit in particular looks quite different than it did a year ago. Brian Sutherland, was promoted to lieutenant and now oversees detective operations on the day shift, including the work of the Detective Violent and Juvenile Unit. Sergeant Cheryl Malloy was uh, 
Sergeant Charmoy was brought back into the unit and is working harder than ever to make sure that the perpetrators of sexual assault and domestic violence are prosecuted and that their victims are supported. As we all know, Julie McDonald received a well-deserved promotion to the rank of sergeant, and the way things aligned, that means she was pulled back into the patrol division. It shouldn't surprise anyone who knows her that Julie remains a committed member of the Domestic Violence Roundtable and continues to advocate tirelessly for the most vulnerable members of our community. Finally, for those of you who have not yet had the privilege, please allow me to, to introduce Detective Rafi Oliveira. Recently assigned to the Detective Division after 11 years of experience in patrol. As the Chief, I'm able to sleep well at night knowing that my DV team is among the best in the state under the leadership of Deputy Superintendent Allen. And I know Attorney Howards would back me up on that claim. There's some more good news, which I'm now able to announce. We've identified a well-qualified candidate, Ms. Julie Tokarowski, who wasn't able to join us tonight. She'll officially be starting with us one week from today as our new victim advocate. The position previously held by the irreplaceable Doreen Gallagher. Doreen's enjoying, obviously, she, <laughs> her, uh, her hard-earned and well-deserved retirement. And because we still aren't done celebrating all the good work she did during her 23 years of service with the department, I'd like to ask her to come up here and receive this citation from Governor Maura Healy's office. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, you know, Doreen loves attention, so here we go. Oh, no. All right. Look at that. <laughs> On behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I'm pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation and recognition, recognition of your more than 23 years of dedicated service to the Brookline Police Department as a domestic violence advocate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I didn't have to say anything. Do you want to? No, no. All right, so as we know, law enforcement alone cannot solve the problem of domestic violence. We need the involvement and support of our entire community. Domestic violence is not a private matter, it's a public concern. It's our collective duty to break the cycle of silence and offer support and resources to those in need. We must provide safe spaces for victims to speak out and know that they will be heard without judgment. Prevention is equally crucial. We must educate our youth about healthy relationships, respect, and conflict resolution. By fostering a culture of respect and empathy, we can hope to eradicate this issue for future generations. Tonight, let us not only remember the victims, but also celebrate the survivors. They are beacons of strength and resilience, a testament to the human spirit's ability to endure and overcome adversity. We need to learn from their experiences and listen when they tell us ways to be better. So far this year, our department has responded to roughly 60 calls for domestic violence incidents and in roughly one third of those cases, a restraining order is issued. We need to all make sure we support our victims and their children so to help them process their trauma and break out of these cycles once and for all. In closing, I urge you all to be advocates for change. I know that most of you already are. Reach out to those who may be suffering in silence, offer your support, help them find the resources that they need to break free from the cycle of violence. Together as a community, we can create a world where domestic violence no longer exists and where every home is a place of safety and love. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome our Norfolk District Attorney, Mr. Michael Morrison. Chief, th thanks for setting the microphone at the right height. I appreciate it. <laughs> so uh, I know Rita's shrinking, but it's, uh, it's good to be here. With, uh, with members of the town government, Bernard, and I see my friend Representative Vitolo was on the, both on the program, and members of town meeting who showed up, um, and of course, uh, members of the department who we work so closely with, and the chief who, uh, I thought, uh, I had a picture of the chief just recently with uh, a couple of the comfort dogs. I told her, after she becomes the, you know, finishes being chief, she has a job as a dog walker, probably pays more money, but it's, uh, <laughs> I just, um, I'm happy to work with the department. I just wanted to say that 
I guess, Chief, you're probably right. You probably do have one of the best departments. I know you have one of the best in the county, and clearly you have the strongest when it comes to domestic violence issues. I don't think there's anybody who equals the commitment or the, the experience you have, but I just want to say a couple of words. Well, October was first declared as Domestic Violence Month uh, in 1989. Since that time, we have, uh, we have taken the time to recognize survivors and to, to uh, encourage victims to come forward and to act as a voice for victims. Domestic violence is prevalent in every community and affects people of all age, of all age, regardless of socioeconomic status, sexual orientation, gender, race, religion, or nationality. Physical violence is often accompanied by emotionally abusive and controlling behavior as part of a much larger systematic pattern of dominance and control. And domestic violence can result in physical injury, psychological trauma, and even death. And the devastating consequences of domestic violence can cross generations and last a lifetime. But we want people to know that there is help here. There's help in the police department. There's help in, in, the, in the health department. There's help in the courthouse. And so we want people to know that don't be afraid to come and ask. I mean, especially uh, my hats off to the survivors and the work that, that you do to spread the word that you were able to get help and you know how to seek help. And we hope that continues. But um, I also just wanted to, to, uh, to end. I had... I was not able to, um, to really recognize my friend and, and former employee who's taught me a lot, particularly about this community, and that's my friend Rita McNally. And, and so, um, so Susan uh, was hel helped me out, so you can blame her, Rita. But, uh, but um, Rita, Rita turned 90. So, uh, so, so um, she, uh, I said to her, she's only 10 years younger than Frank Bellotti, so Frank's 100. So I won't tell you, I won't tell you uh, Rita's age, but... Um, uh, Rita, um, when I became the district attorney, I inherited Rita, and it was one of the best hires that I kept. And, and um, she's, uh, everybody here knows how hard she works and how committed she is. And she's the type and kind of person that you want to have on your side. And for those people in the domestic violence community, you couldn't have a better advocate. So I do have a little citation for you, Rita, that, that um, it says, For your many years of unrelenting commitment to the community, tremendous dedication, and steadfastness to enduring domestic violence, unwavering support for survivors, and your inestimable contributions to the Norfolk District Attorney's Office. And be it further known that the Norfolk District Attorney commends this achievement and extends best wishes for continued success and indication of my appreciation signed by Michael Morrissey. And hopefully your retirement checks are coming in anyway, so... <laughs> Thank you, DA Morrissey. It's my pleasure to welcome from the Brookline Select Board, Mr. Bernard Green. Okay, this doesn't fit me. Uh, how does this thing work? <laughs> Let's see. In the meantime, I'll find my notes here. Okay, great. So thank you, DA Morrissey, and thank you, Doreen Gallagher, Right over there. Uh, thank you, Rita McNally. Uh, thank you, Jennifer Pastor. Thank you, everyone who's involved with this very, very important issue in Brookline and globally. You know, um, I was talking to, to actually Doreen, and I, I said, I don't remember the context, that it never ends. And I think that's an important uh, phrase to uh, sort of be a theme for a discussion on domestic violence. It never ends. I mean, it never ends here in Brookline. It never ends nationally. It never ends globally, because it is a global problem. And in my opinion, and maybe controversial opinion, I mean, it really is a function of the role of women in our society. Women are supposed to be obedient, and sometimes to enforce that obedience, we are told men are told that violence or various forms of violence is appropriate to enforce that obedience. You don't have to believe that view of, of what is behind domestic violence, but let me just say that we clearly have a problem in our society, 
in terms of how we treat women. And domestic violence is just one aspect to it. The town, and, uh, town of Brookline and the police department uh, takes it very seriously, and we're trying to end it. Uh, it's going to be hard, unfortunately, but you know, we do do the work, not just in terms of enforcement, going out and, and stopping acts of violence as they occur, but the long, difficult, and slow work that's done in the community uh, with both individuals, but more importantly, with youth in the high schools and, and other schools. In terms of helping youth understand how to deal with problems that they may have as teenagers, all right, with those, um, the, the, those uh, hormones coursing through their body, causing them to think in crazy ways. How do we help them ensure that those hormones don't result in the type of behavior that is or may become uh, domestic violence? So it never ends, but it can end. And I think that it will end with the work that all of the advocates uh, here in this group, as well as throughout town, um, so long as you continue working hard uh, on, in the various ways in which you address these issues and teach the younger generations different ways of interacting with each other, particularly men versus women, uh, so that we can begin the process of reducing uh, domestic violence, which is a, I mean, it's a scrooge in our, whatever the word is, on our society, on, uh, and we should be embarrassed that it happens. But it's there, we have to fight it, and you're doing the job, or you're doing the work, and the work of the advocates here in Brookline and elsewhere are re really represents model behavior uh, that, that we're proud of, and, and we thank you for, uh, for the work that you do, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how gut-wrenching it is. Uh, you do the work, you persist, and eventually it will end. So, thank you. Thank you, Bernard. It's my great pleasure to invite Tommy Vitola, our state representative, to come up and say a few words. How are we doing today? Uh, my name is Tommy Vitolo, and I hope you'll forgive me. The past week and a half has been a lot, and so I have not spent any time thinking about what I would say today. So you get me raw, uh, and I hope it goes well. Um, I don't have much to say about domestic violence. I can't tell you anything you don't already know. We all understand the terrors of domestic violence in one form or another. Some, uh, unfortunately, through personal experience and others adjacency. And, and I don't have broad answers, uh, nor, frankly, do I share uh, my good friend, Select Board Chair Green's optimism that we will ever end it completely. Um, I hope you're right, though. And I do know that there are things we can and must do in the meantime. And so I actually want to say three things. You want to give a speech, you do things in threes, especially if you're winging it. Uh, the first two are going to be, are going to be difficult and uncomfortable uh, because that's the kind of things they are. The third uh, will not be. So, so hang on tight. We've got to eat our peas, and then we'll get to the dessert. Uh, the first thing I want to say is thank you to Jen Pastor and our police officers for being so visible around synagogues and Jewish cultural institutions in the last 10 or 12 days, and to Chief in particular for attending events night after night, providing any amount of reassurance she can for the thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people who live in Brookline whose life changed dramatically Saturday a week ago. And that's just on top of all the other things that they're so busy doing. And so I want to just specifically 
thank the police department for that. And if terror and conflict in the Middle East isn't uh, difficult enough or, or, or difficult enough to talk about, now I'm going to talk about gun control, which is another one of those places where people disagree. Uh, the House yesterday passed gun safety legislation. And there are parts that some people like, and there are parts that the same people don't like. Um, for some people in this audience, they were against the bill as a whole, although there were parts that they did like for me. I, there's no part I didn't like about it. Uh, but I want to tell you about one part in particular that I suspect folks in this audience will appreciate the importance of, and I, I wrote it down because otherwise I wouldn't get it right. Let me rephrase that. I had my legislative aide write it down because otherwise I wouldn't get it right. So thank you, Tim Wilson. Uh, the bill that the House passed yesterday uh, updated the harassment prevention order and extreme risk protective order or red flag laws. Now, family members, law enforcement, school administrators, licensed healthcare providers, and employers can petition a court for an extreme risk protection order, excuse me, prevention order, based on showing that an individual is a present danger to themselves or others. By allowing more people to report to the courts, we are going to be able to protect more people who may not have gotten that protection previously. We have also updated harassment prevention orders to be consistent with abuse prevention orders to allow courts to order dispossession of licenses, permits, and firearms contemporaneously with the issuance of a harassment prevention order. So, Rita, when you ask what's the state doing, yes. that's one thing the state is doing. If you are a person who a judge has determined is threatening to another person in this commonwealth, may, now may not be a good time for you to keep those guns in your house. And that will reduce actual violence associated with domestic violence. It won't end it, but it will reduce it. Those are the two tough things. Now, here's the easy thing. Stay with me. The easy thing, the thing that we can all agree, is about our friend Rita over here. Come here. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> if I keep talking, we may run out the clock. <laughs> this may not be a fancy frame, but it is a reusable folder. It is a reusable folder. Uh, so this, in fact, is... Um, a citation from the Massachusetts House of Representatives, and we offer our sincerest congratulations. We're put them all under arrest one, of these days. one of these days, but not yet. Uh, to Rita McNally, in recognition of her continued work on domestic violence advocacy. Thank you, Rita. You do it. <laughs> I was going to eat you. No, good. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, folks. It's that time we'd like to invite some of the peer leaders from the Brookline High School to come and give some of their reflections, please. So when you're ready. Hi, um, can you guys hear me? Yes, okay. Um, no. no? Okay. Is it better? Yeah. Okay. Um, my name is Sunny, and I'm a peer leader from um, Procline High. And um, we're here to read some of the poems um, just for people to listen and to reflect on. And yeah. The way. The way is long. Let us go together. The way is difficult. Let us help each other. The way is joyful. Let us, let us share it. The way is ours alone. Let us go in love. The way grows before us. Let us begin.
Hi, I'm Violet. I'm also a peer leader. Um, all the world is a stage and we are the actors. We are always auditioning for roles in hope that someday we will get the lead. We endure constant rehearsals and long hours until one day we get the part that was written for who and what we are. In the search for the perfect role, we do a lot of soul searching and we work hard. In fact, so hard to win that when we do not get the part we felt that we were due, we know we have no regrets because we know we have given it our best shot. As such, the only question left to answer is, what role do we want to play? Uh, hi, my name is Graham Rothschild, and I'm also a peer leader. Um, this poem is called Forever Friend, and I don't know. I, I really like it. I'm going to fold it up and put it on in my backpack after this, because anyway. Forever friend. These are special thoughts of you I often have in mind. You've, you've proved to be a better friend than I could hope to find. And here's my way of staying close whenever we're apart, for this note is a little part of me and all that's in my heart. So put it in your pocket and remember through the day, a special friend who cares for you is just a thought away. All right. Uh, hi guys, um, I'm Fabian Ugalde, also a peer leader from BHS, surprisingly. And today I'm reading a poem called What is a Dream? It builds you up and makes you strong. It teaches you when you do wrong. It looms in front of you day and night. It's never ever out of sight. It's all you base your actions on. It's your motivation when hope is gone. Your dream, whatever it may be, can be your greatest company. Thanks. Thank you so much, you guys. That was a great job. Um, I just want to uh, take a moment just to say thank you and recognize D Julie McDonald and Cheryl Malloy and just to say their dedication and their commitment and their generosity. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you because without you guys, this would not have been possible. And to all of you guys who helped to put this together, I want to say thank you. It makes a difference, you know, in days and times like today or maybe yesterday and certainly in the last 10 days when we feel like we don't have any choices and we don't have any control. You know, getting involved, coming out here, supporting each other, that's control and that's giving back and that's protecting our own community and raising our voices and just one step at a time. That's all we can ask. And so I would like, it's my honor, my great honor, to invite Susan to please come and say a few words, our closing remarks. This is a little too tall for me. Can you hear me? I'm just going to scream. I'm just going to yell. I'm not going to thank anybody because everybody's been thanked, but I'm glad you're all here. And Rita from the Domestic Violence Roundtable, you have been the force. Oh, oh, Bill, Jesus. You have been the force that has kept us going. Thank you so much. Ooh, I hope you're not allergic. <laughs> I'm not going to thank everybody, but I do want to follow up on what Representative Vitolo said. This has been really an incredible, incredible week. I think for all of us, but for some of us, it's probably been more incredible, those with family, friends, and people in other parts of the world. Um, glued to the television, not sleeping, and not eating. Not that I can afford not to eat. But at any rate, I do want to say that this ceremony is not just for victims and survivors, as Bernard said, of domestic violence here. It's for victims and survivors of violence anywhere in the world. And having said that, regardless of your affiliation, regardless of your faith or no faith or whatever, I'm going to ask some things of you. Set an intention from my yoga world. Set an intention every day to listen to each other, to argue forcibly with each other, to be kind, to reach out if you see people struggling. And there are people struggling not only in our community, but worldwide. Set an intention to do something different that you would not have done 11 days ago. 
And with that, I'm just going to read a survivor's palm, psalm, palm, psalm. Um, psalm, thank you, D.A. Morrissey. I knew, that, I knew that we agreed on something. I have been victimized. I was in a fight that was not fair. I didn't ask for the fight. I lost. There is no shame in losing. I was a, I was a victim. Now I'm a survivor. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Never let someone who contributes so little to a relationship control so much of it. Now I look back with sadness rather than with hate, and I hope that will spread throughout the world. I look forward with hope rather than despair. I may never forget, but I need not constantly remember. Thank you all. And with that, there are refreshments inside. We'd like you to come in and maybe sign a sheet with your info, the information so we can keep you informed. And again, I thank everybody for coming, listening, and go forth with an intention. Thank you.